Hey Math One, I've got a new video for you. Uh, we're going away from the number comparison business. It's been we've been we've been really harping on that for a while. Uh, now I'm going to introduce you guys or remind you of the order of operations, but I'm going to do it through the through sort of like the vehicle of geometry formulas, which is why you see this sea of formulas in front of you. Now before you freak out. Just know that I will not be requiring you to memorize these formulas. You'll have them for every quiz, mini quiz, and test that we have. Uh, but you do need to know the order of operations. So to get it started on that, let's talk about this non-geometric formula problem and see if we can make sense of it. So it basically just says, uh, recap the order of operations. Consider how you'd simplify it. Basically, basically asking the question: In what order would we do all these computations? All right. And since we're doing everything without a calculator to make sure we have that computational knowledge, uh, we really need to know our order of operations. We need to know our stuff. So, if you recall. There was sort of this acronym that allowed us to, you know, think our way through it. PEMDAS, you know, when I was a, when I was a student, they would say, "Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally." I don't think they use that much these days, but I could be wrong. Uh, the P stands for parentheses, and what that means is that you are going to compute everything that can be simplified inside the confines of parentheses. So these parentheses are basically acting as a placeholder for multiplication. In fact, nothing's going on inside the parentheses except 12 is just chilling out. And sometimes that can get confusing. So what I'm going to do is say, this is going to be 6 divided by 18. And instead of keeping the parentheses there, I'm just going to say times 12. I think that might help uh, avoid some of the confusion with this whole parentheses part. Now, 9 minus 3 inside the parentheses is for sure something we have to do first. So that's your first move. You're going to say 9 minus 3 is 6 inside the parentheses. Maybe keep that there, put a square on it, or keep the square on it, and it's still subtraction. So doing everything inside the parentheses possible is the first move. Uh, exponents is the next part of the acronym. Um, exponents, by definition, informally, are just those little those little numbers to the upper right of any base in which you're saying, hey, see that six? Multiply it by itself two times. If that were a three, you'd multiply it by itself three times. So that's going to be the next move we do. So I'm just going to leave the 16 divided by 18 times 12 alone and say we are subtracting parentheses six times six. Six times six is 36. Now this one's kind of like, it can be iffy. This is multiply and this is divide. However, this is not the order. It's actually multiply or divide from left to right. A lot of students get confused about that because they see multiply, quote, first, and they say, oh, 18 times 12. Got to do that multiplication first. But that's really not what's happening. In fact, what I do is I look at the division symbol, and I always say, if I create a fraction from that division, it's going to be pretty much impossible to go out of the order of operations unless I really don't know how to multiply fractions. So... What I'm going to advise you guys to do every time is whenever you see division, just convert that 6 divided by 18 into 6 over 18, and you'll probably avoid a lot of issues that way. Now, 6 divided by 18 can be reduced, right? You can divide the top by 6 and the bottom by 6 to make that 6 over 18 a... I guess less concentrated version of 1 over 3. So it's 1 third times 12 minus 36. 
And it's multiply or divide left to right. So we kind of did the division when we turned it into a fraction and we simplified it. Now multiply from left to right. That would be our next move in the order of operations. And to multiply a fraction times a whole number, we put the 12 over 1. And you can multiply straight across and then divide it or cross cancel. 12 divided by 3 is 4 over 1. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. So it's, it's pretty much 4. And then we still got the minus 36. So the last two moves are kind of similar to multiply or divide. It's add or subtract from left to right. So when you're taking the difference between two numbers, 4 and negative 36, just remember, take the difference between them. 36 minus 4 is 32. The bigger number is negative. So I'm keeping it at negative 32. All right, I really felt it was necessary to just do that, that recap of what the order of operations are and what it looks like in the context of a problem where you actually have to use all the parts. Now going back to this whole idea of using this in geometric formulas, I'm not going to give you a whole lot today that look like this. What I'm going to do is say, compute, yeah, like this, compute these areas of the following figures. So a circle with a radius of seven meters long. I'm not going to scroll up and down all the time with this. Um, I'd like you to look at your note sheet as your, uh, well, you know what? I can scroll. I can scroll. So we get a circle with a radius of seven meters long, okay? And we're finding this area. So you're first asking yourself, area of a circle, question mark. What is that formula? Right there. A equals Oh, it's hard to see. There we go. Area of a circle is A equals pi r squared. So this is pretty basic. I need the radius of r. We're going to use 3.14 as a, uh, like an estimate for pi. So we're going to say pi is not exactly, but approximately 3.14. So 3.14 times 7, that's its radius, remember, 7 squared. So your job is to make sure you understand, I know that exponents comes before multiplication. So I'm going to do the 7 times 7 first. So 3.14 times 7 times 7 is 49. And this is a pretty basic example. At this point, you probably want to rewrite this stacked as such. Remember, we're, doing, we're taking a long time to basically get all the cobwebs out of just being able to do things without calculators. So again, we're, we're returning to multiplying things involving decimals. 6, 12, 28. And you guys have been practicing this for what? Three, four days now? It shouldn't be too scary. Drop a 0, and then you got 4 times 4 is 16. Carry a 1. 4 times 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then there's a 12 there. Add the columns 6, 8, 13, 5, 1. Two digits of accuracy to the right of the decimal place. That means your final answer will be two digits in. And our final answer is 153.86. And this is where I need to add one more thing. 
units of measurement when we talk about area is always talking about square space. It's a two-dimensional, esti not estimate, it's a two-dimensional measurement. So you would want to say it's meters or m squared. And I can talk more about that in class. But bottom line, it's sort of like you took seven meters times itself, right? So it's almost like in the, in the problem, you got meters times meters, which almost creates a meter squared inside of the problem as you're moving forward through it. But I'm just asking you guys to kind of remember area, square area, right? Area squared units. How about a trapezoid? What is the area of a trapezoid? Well, let's scroll back up and check it out. Got it. Right there, the area of a trapezoid is A equals one half times the height, and it's just put side by side with B1 plus B2. All right, let's unpack that. Now remember, a, a trapezoid looks like this. It's not an isosceles trapezoid. I think in, in most human brains, they see their first trapezoid like this. Okay, But that's not how a trapezoid has to appear. All right? A lot of times it can look like that. So when I think of trapezoids, I tend to be more along the lines of something that kind of looks like this, where this is your base. You can rewrite it on its side. This is like base one, base two, and your height maybe looks something like that. All right. Sorry. Let's just get to it, right? We're, we're plugging this into a formula, so it doesn't even really, at this point, matter what our visualization of a trapezoid is. Sorry. A long aside here. So our area is a half times, what is its height? Well, three inches tall would indicate that that three is its height. Base one, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you call the base one. Base one plus base two, base two plus base one. It doesn't matter the order. So four plus 8.2. So then you would do the stuff inside the parentheses first. Order of operations, parentheses first. And uh, keep in mind that when you have a decimal included in addition, you have to line up the decimals of the numbers. So 4 really needs to be called 4.0. Otherwise, you might accidentally like tag the 4 along with the 0.2. And that'd be a disaster. 4 plus 8.2 is not 8.6. 4 plus 8.2 is 12.2. All right, now when you see a dot for multiplication here and parentheses for multiplication here, just remember, it's all multiplication. It's all multiplication. So you can just do 1 half times 3 first. We can just think about that. What's half of three? 1.5. The 12.2 is unchanged. And then you would multiply 12.2 times 1.5. We talked about decimal multiplication. So I'm just going to roll through this. Drop a 0, 2, 2, 1. Add the columns. Two digits out, two digits in, that's our answer.
It's 18.3, and again, square area, right? This whole thing was area, so I'm gonna go inches squared. 